The week before last, when my niece's wedding was finished, Father Jim and I got in the car and drove to Vienna. And because Vienna is one of those places that has a thousand and one museums, of course, we had to go to a couple of them. And the one I'm thinking of particularly is called the Albertina. That's one of the great collections of modern art. Uh, you walk around a corner and suddenly there's a Van Gogh. You turn around and there's a room that's half filled with Chagall's and Paul Clay and Gustav Klimt and Egon Schiele, all these, these, these giants of the 20th century. But because it was once a palace, it's part of the complex that was the Imperial Palace in, in Vienna, uh, it's not entirely a modern building. The, the, many of the rooms have been revised and, and changed around to be like you'd see in a museum, but you come around a corner and suddenly there's this something that was always there from the days when it was still Archduke Albert's palace. I'm thinking of one place where you go down a weird little hallway and on one side it's all mirrors of the sort that were popular in the 19th century because they were so expensive. It was a way of showing your wealth. You put up the whole wall of mirrors. And for some reason I got stuck next to this wall of mirrors waiting for Jim to come around from wherever he had been. And so I was able to watch the traffic that was going by and we were these two American guys walking around in this museum, but aside from us, it was this mob of, of Austrian teenagers. Good always to see people from the own, their own country and young people looking at their, their national treasures. But in this case, what was more interesting to me was that they were doing what teenagers do. They were going around in twos and threes and fives, and they were talking and flirting and looking at their phones and, and whatever else they might do in this museum full of these treasures. But when they walked past the wall of mirrors, every one of them turned and had a good look at him or herself, sometimes for a long time. I watched a couple of kids, you know, doing whatever they do, and you know, fine, whatever. And I couldn't think of a way to tell them, you know, if you'll just turn around and look, you'll see a, the, the, a masterpiece right there behind you. As beautiful as you may be and may imagine yourself to be, if you'll just turn around, there's this glorious thing happening right here. And you're not even noticing it. This, I think, is where we find ourselves today when we hear the lessons about transfiguration. We're used to hearing them on the last Sunday of Epiphany when they're kind of trail mix for getting through Lent. <laughs> we, we, we see the glory of God as a way of convincing us that the, the hardship of Lent is worth it as a way of getting to Easter. But now we hear them in a completely different context. We're nowhere near Lent. We're nowhere near winter. We're at the height of the growing season. I'll tell you, I came back from my vacation to discover that someone had planted weeds in my yard. I have no idea where they came from. But suddenly they have taken over. They're huge. This is the time of the year when I think we feel our own competence the most. When we feel like we need anybody else and anything else the least because it's the hottest time. There's plenty of everything. We can't imagine shortage or want or cold or hunger or anything at this time of the year. So to be reminded that we have to look up once in a while from whatever it is we imagine is good enough is important. To look away from the mirror. That is what Peter is doing in the story, by the way. What he's doing is falling back on his own competence, what he knows. Well, okay, let, 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 let's make some, some real estate here. No. What he needs to do is look up from whatever his distraction and his confusion is and see the full glory of God right there in front of him. A useful reminder to us to look up and see the full glory of God standing among us too. You and I who so often are, as it says, weighed down with sleep and confused and not knowing quite what to do. So, dear friends, here we find ourselves at this odd time of the year, hearing these odd lessons, perhaps it is a reminder that we have spent a little too much time staring into the mirror. If only we will turn around, we will discover that God is right there behind us waiting to be discovered. Amen.